angry, aggressive, no sense of shame, always in trouble, always to blame. Of all the ways to confront the dark legacy of the slave trade in Scotland, this is one of the more unusual. Kenyan-born, Scottish-raised Mara Menzies is on the Edinburgh stage. She's telling stories that subtly trace racial prejudice all the way back to a history about which so much of Scotland is silent. If you go to Glasgow and you've got streets like Jamaica Street or the Merchant City, nobody understands or realises the, the history of that and how those places got their names. Um, people are not aware of the immense, how we were the majority shareholders in the slave trade, how the 70% of the Jamaican telephone directory is made up of Scottish names. And if people are not aware of the history, they don't understand the consequences of when why things are the way they are today. So it's why this narrative that, you know, this narrative that lets people know that, oh, black people are very violent. Um, there's a lot of knife crime in the black community, of uh, people are, are of lower intelligence, which is a, a very common narrative. People don't understand how that was essential back then to make, to justify this trade and why that, why that exists to this day. In Glasgow, it's a history that hides in plain sight. Look beyond the famous traffic cone at the building behind it. What's now a gallery was the lavish townhouse of a slave-owning tobacco merchant. In the 18th century, boats came packed with cotton and sugar and made this one of the richest cities in the world. But Glasgow's golden era owes an enormous debt to those who laboured in captivity. A debt that's nowhere near being repaid. You've been able to draw a direct link, have you, from the slave trade to the university as we know it today? Yes, our historians have, have looked at our archives and identified, we think, all the bequests that came to the university from people involved in the slave trade and the plantation economies of uh, the Caribbean. Slowly, Scotland is taking some responsibility. In the University of Glasgow, they wanted to know exactly what they'd gained from the barbaric trade in slaves so they could pay something back. Have you been able to put a figure on just what all those gifts, all that money that came from the slave trade is worth in today's money? Yes, and if you treat it in today's currency, today's prices, if you like, the top figure uh, is just under £200 million. We're sorry that that happened and that we benefited in that way. And now we're trying to, if you like, put it right, uh, repair the past. So money will now flow in the reverse direction. A £20 million reparations fund has been announced and a tie-in with the University of the West Indies. So we've made a lot of progress in a couple and of years. your advice was extremely helpful through the project. Speaking about just as There's been input too from Glasgow's Jamaican community. It's not taught. Mm -hmm. It's not in a conspicuous place. And it's still a hush-hush. How do you feel when you see this university now that you know a little bit about where some of the money's come from? It's emotional, a bit of anger, and a bit of, it's overwhelming. Yvonne is a current student here. When I walk into the buildings, I walk tall because I'm representing the dream, the hopes that my ancestors could not represent. So I have a different approach. So I walk with dignity because I should be here. This is built on the blood and the sweat of my ancestors. But from their perspective, progress nationally has been achingly slow. There's been an unwillingness in Scottish public life to acknowledge that Scotland's a perpetrator. The fact was that there's been a historical process of organised forgetting for 150 years. So we're trying to redress that gap of knowledge and that gap of acknowledgement. So the fact that Glasgow University is leading the way around acknowledging is important crucially important. What do you think the audience will take away from this? I think if you can get people to feel a story then they take that feeling away with them and if you feel something then that is that is where change begins to happen. There is no one way to do it but Scotland's part in the story of slavery is at least now being told. It wants to take the good, the just, but you can stop it. Yes, you must.
Mara Menzies ending that report by Kieran Jenkins. Well, in Glasgow this morning, a memorandum of understanding was signed between the universities of Glasgow and the West Indies. The move coincides with the International Day of Remembrance of the Slave Trade. The plaque to mark today's signing was also unveiled, and Scotland's national poet Jackie Kay read a poem specially commissioned for the event. Here's a gesture, late but true. Here's two saltires raised for you. Here's a redress that's long been owed. Here's the first step on the road. Well, after the ceremony, I asked Jackie Kay how significant it is for the University of Glasgow to pay reparations. It's hugely significant. It's the very, very first time any institution anywhere in the country has decided to repatriate an amount of money um, because of the money that was this country gained from the slave trade. Because the only other time that money was repatriated to do with the slave trade was back in 1834, when the British government gave £20 million to slave owners to compensate them for the money that they wouldn't be making out of their slaves. So, Sir Jeff Palmer, Scotland's first black professor, said today, the move is proof we cannot change history, but we can change the consequences. How do you hope this changes the consequences? Well, I hope that, for a start, other universities will follow Glasgow's lead and that Glasgow is leading the way. This is the first step on hopefully what will be a long road. There isn't a single institution in this whole country, um, in the whole of the UK, that doesn't, hasn't benefited in some way or another from, from the slave trade that comes from the, the colonial period or before. You will know not everyone is pleased with the stance the university is taking. Um, some criticising it, saying it suggests people who are alive today are responsible for the sins of their ancestors, and that's not helpful. What do you say about that? It doesn't suggest that at all. What it does say is that we are, we are sitting inside buildings that have been built from the money that was gained from the slave trade. The countries in the Caribbean are often way, way behind in terms of, of how they would be if that money had been ploughed into their institutions and their country. It is just and it's fair that some of that money should go back to the, to the Caribbean. But is there a direct consequence, for example, for black people living in Scotland? Um, you paint a pretty bleak picture when you say any Scottish city is decades behind cities like Manchester or Bristol in terms of attitudes to race. Somebody's quoted me out of context. I didn't actually say that. I said that any Scottish city was decades behind any English city in terms of how the mirror it held up to itself. So in, in, in Birmingham, for instance, having a black brummie is not unusual and a Birmingham person would think that. In, in London, the same. In Liverpool, the same. But in Scotland, in any Scottish city, although we've got a large, diverse population here, if, if you say Glaswegian, the image that comes to your head isn't necessarily of a black Glaswegian. And so for people to catch up and realise that there are a lot of black people living in Scotland, that we do have a diverse population here, but we need to see that that population reflected in the media, in, in all sorts of different ways. And the fact that Glasgow University is, as you say, leading the way on this issue, you know, you're the national poet, isn't that all evidence that, that Scotland is changing? It's a great moment to be black and Scottish. Scotland is changing. But in order for countries to change, we need to hold up a mirror to ourselves and to look at the ways in which we can change more. The history of the slave trade has not been, up until recently, taught in Scottish schools. The average Scottish person won't know that, um, that Glasgow is up, up to its neck and money from the slave trade. They won't know those things. And so it's important that we, that we learn from our history so as we can go forward to make a different kind of future. And it's wonderful that Glasgow is leading the way in this. Glasgow also led the fight against the abolition of slavery. It's always been a paradoxical city. This is an issue which is very contentious. Obviously, Glasgow University is leading the way, but it is this question of an apology for Britain's role in the slave trade. I mean, how important do you think that is? Well, I think that's very important. I think that apologies are important because they allow people to move forward. And in, in, in real life, we know that apologies are important. Once you've had an apology from somebody, you can move forward and, and move on. Um, you can't move on in the same way if things are not acknowledged. And if people don't acknowledge things, then it's, it's problematic. And just in terms of cha you know, more change in Scotland, for example, you're said to have the ear of Nicola Sturgeon. What do you tell her the government should be doing? 
all sorts of things. I mean, I don't know about having the ear of Nicola Sturgeon. I think that's a, that's a funny kind of um, way to put it. But I certainly think that she takes an interest in having a national poet and that for a national poet, I get to, to, to have, a, have a voice.